Okay, Big D, here we go. We're gonna build our first cabinet. Awesome. AKA the box. The box, baby. So what this is, is this is a wall cabinet we're gonna build. Okay. Okay. Now, we are gonna cover so many things. And to the point when we do our final assembly on it, you're gonna be going, oh my God, it took forever. No, it's learning how to process all the pieces properly. Okay. So we're gonna rip our sides, tops and bottoms. We're gonna rip spanners. I'll show you how to do that with a track saw. We're gonna cut backs. We're gonna groove for our back. We're going to do what we call system holes that are based off a 32 millimeter increment. Okay, top and bottom. Okay. Um, including in that is how to cut our sides to fit that 32 millimeter increment. We call them balance panels. We're gonna punch these holes using the LR32 system. For these, these are called hinge plates. These are for our adjustable pins. I got them right here. Okay, so you can have an adjustable shelf right here. That's what that's for. This is for your hinge. This is the hinge, this goes on the door. This is called a hinge plate, and that fits in there. You're gonna know all the measurements for this type of cabinet. It's called frameless. A frameless cabinet is an edge banded in the front, okay? okay? There's no face frame. They go through a variety of uh, names, Euro cabinets, uh, uh, frameless cabinets, but they're all just based off of 32 millimeters. Okay. And that's what I'm gonna get in your head as we build this. 32, 32, okay? 32. Now it's a process. And we'll have chapters in this video, so you don't have to watch the whole thing. You can go back and check out the chapters as we break this apart. Um, we're gonna edge band. There's a variety of different ways to edge band. We're gonna use the Contoro and just all kinds of great information in this video. But what comes about is it's a box, <laughs> okay? And, but this is the basics because I have to start here with you on this wall cabinet. Mm -hmm. And from there, we're gonna do a base cabinet frameless. We'll do some drawer boxes. We'll do some corner boxes, blinds. You'll understand all this terminology as we progress on this channel. Awesome. I'm always gonna say this before we get started. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. Here we go. So what we want to do is we want to capture the blade. So, so go, go ahead, set it up like that. You're going to take it like this. That allows you six millimeters of cut and you're going to bring it all the way down and bring it down here. Okay. Perfect, Nate. Okay, and you're just going to bring it back down. Perfect. And always lift it up full speed. And by the way, I just want to say, see this right here? That's about the best cut I've ever seen. <laughs> we need to get our 300 millimeter widths. We're, gonna, we're building up a cabinet, a wall cabinet, whatever you want to call it. And we need enough plywood for four pieces, a top, a bottom, and two sides. Okay. okay. And we're gonna be ripping them at 300 millimeters. Okay. Okay, basically 12 inches, roughly. Roughly 12 inches. When you set these up, you make sure that this is completely open. This here goes on the outside rib. Okay, and you see this T-nut here? It's a cam, an eccentric cam that locks it up from underneath. So what I want you to do is this one is gonna go down there. Grab me that one. Because when I set this up, make sure it's completely loose, okay? I'm gonna have you do that one down there okay. in a minute, in a minute, okay? You put that on the outside rib, and you pick this up, and you slide it in there like this. Okay. Okay, so go ahead, take your hand off that. I wanna show the camera this. I lock it underneath here, and that's pulling that T-nut in, okay? And then I lock it on the outside rib. This is why I had you get me this one. The scale goes toward the board. Ah, oh, okay. Because we're gonna have to rotate this and flip it around in a few minutes. You set your line up, okay? We're gonna set 300 to the middle of that cursor. Okay. So this is an eccentric cam. This T-nut here goes just like this, and I'll have you set it up. But do you have your Polini on you? Yep. Okay, give me that thing. Okay, this is what I, I love this because I could take this and what I do is you see where it says 300, I extend that line and bring my cursor right in here like this. Okay? That gives you a perfectly parallel uh, rep and making sure that's the hump. You're all the way past it and then bring it up full speed. So yeah. I'm just gonna set this here for us. 
Okay. And if we check this out now, instead of moving that whole piece of plywood, we're just gonna move it right here. We're gonna take this out. This is exactly 300 millimeters, even in the middle. Well, right here. Can I get Boom. Exactly Hold on. Hold 300 on. millimeters. One of the things I wanna point out like I've always pointed out, and I've always done this. What if we had to rip about 10 sheets of plywood all at 300 millimeters? Or Whoa. in the midst of it, we had to do some 400 millimeters for kicks, toe kicks, and then some 600 millimeters for bases. You could get turned around on what's what. Sure. Always label your boards. Waiting on it. We're gonna rip uh, 100 millimeter strips, 100 millimeter strips for uh, our spanners. And gotcha. those are the part or stabilizers that we screw into the wall or screw through into the wall. Okay, so how do we make sure, so we did 300s before, now we're going down, way down to 100. How do we adjust Okay, that? so what you're probably asking me is how do we do something narrower than a rail? That's what I'm talking okay. about. Okay, it's these two pieces that I have installed on here. These are called the extensions for the parallel guides. Okay. Okay, there's a, I'm gonna show you how to calibrate them. Okay. Okay, but we'll set them at 100 and we'll make our rips. One of the things I always check is look at that. That's dead on 100. And what do we do? Mark it! You mark it. Okay? There you go. Hello. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up the multifunction table. Okay. It, I mean, if we look at it right here, it's a series of drilled out 20 millimeter holes. But the beauty of it, and I've always told everybody, when you set this up correctly for our cross cutting station with our track saw, you will get perfect 90 degree cuts. Nice. Okay? And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Sounds good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this down. I'm gonna have you grab that uh, track saw behind me. Don't put it on there yet. I'm gonna lock it down. I'm gonna make sure it's the right height, making sure that that pin, because we already checked for 90, make sure it's fully supported. Okay, make sure that this clean edge is up against there. Yep. I always do this. I label where my edge is gonna be, and I want you to make your cross cut. Perfect. Before we go and reset it, I want to make sure that this is 90 degrees here. Okay. Okay, so I can't reach over there to the second drawer to the left. Chris, maybe you can. No, next one. There you go. Grab that big square there. All right. You know, remember, you make sure you square square. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to bring that right in and look how dead on that is all the way out. Beautiful. Absolutely perfect. So what do you do? What do you do? You tell me. We gotta do our corner, right? Yeah. Because that's our night. Perfect. All right. He's learning. <laughs> okay, so both our sides are gonna be 768 millimeter. If we can get in here. And on this tape, you see that 768. Uh, a duh, that's an equivalent of a 32 millimeter length. What? Okay, so we'll make our mark right there. That's what these little diamonds are in this uh, tape. That was a 768? Yep, 768, right that, right up here so we can see it. We're gonna do two at 768 millimeters. Okay. And two at 732. 732. Okay, and just for uh, giggles, I'll tell you, this is 18 millimeter plywood, so 18 millimeter and 18 millimeter is? 36. Plus 732 comes to 748, so this is going to be a perfect box. And because we cut our splinter guard with the saw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that and I'm going to split that line just like that. Okay. Now we need two of them. We're not going to, now it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But it should be, okay? Yeah. Because say this is an entire kitchen of uh, wall cabinets, right? You want repeatability. Yep. So guess what? Bring that in. Just like you wanted that repeatable 300 millimeter rip, okay. we're gonna get repeatability. We're gonna bring this in just like this, and we'll make our cut. Boy, I'm gonna tell you, dude, that's about the best cut I've ever seen. Okay. <laughs> So let's take that out. Okay. And now here, before we do this, I want to verify this. This, this measurement is probably the, the most important measurement of building uh, the cabinetry because when we use the LR32 system with the router, 
um, you'll see where we don't have to set up two sets of lines. We only have to set up one because uh. it is a balanced panel. So let's just look it out. Okay. Let's just take it like this and look at that. Look at you. Look at your measuring. 768 millimeters. Absolutely perfect at 90. So guess what? We're good to go. We're just going to take this. Look at that's Okay, and 768. Okay, let's get that labeled. Man, we're almost, we almost have a cabinet. Go figure. And he's getting good. Is we want to measure this one, 732. Okay. Now this one's not imperative because we're not going to be punching any holes in it. But I'm just going to take that and bring it in. Boy, I, I've labeled uh, lumber all kinds of different ways, but this is the way I like to do it. 700, see that 30? There's my two. Okay, right there. And what I do is I make a point sometimes because I know I'm right in the middle of the line. You want to know something? That's about the best cut I've ever seen. Okay. <laughs> He's repeating that. Okay. We're going to take this, flip it out of the way. Okay. Okay. We want to hold the accuracy of that because that's 732. Mm -hmm. Let's set that board over there. This is one of the most common mistakes. Hey, that's you're wonderful. automatically taking this, right? Right. And you're gonna bring this down and cut a 732. What's gonna be the problem? I don't have a right. Ah, you don't have a 90 degrees. That's why the stop flips. We feed it this way. Go ahead and lift it up onto there. And we get the support table over there. And now we gotta get a 90 on this. This is so common. And then, so what happens is you, if you had done that and you've gotten a 732 cut on that, we don't know if that was 90 yet. Okay. You have to ensure it's 90. So you, when we start joining that box together, that could twist the box out of square. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. So let's get the 90 on here. We'll label it. Wow. That's about the best cut I've ever seen. <laughs> so we know we have our 90. Good. So you're gonna take this now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it like this, not take out the garage door opener, flip it, go ahead, flip down your stop. We're gonna bring it right in, like this, and there you go, let's get that 732 out of there. You are the man! Wow! But look at your label. Okay. And this is our 732. Perfect. There's our get the tops and bottoms done. And I'm going to say this a hundred times during this video. It's the process of the making your panels. Assembly is going to be absolutely nothing. Okay. It, it the time consuming part is perfect parallel rips, making sure your cross cuts are 90. So now what we're going to do is we're probably, we're going to, not probably, we're going to go into edge banding. Okay. When you look at the cabinet straight on, you don't want to look at the different plies of plywood. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to ply and trim a piece of edge banding. Now this is uh, maple. So I got this one millimeter thick maple edge banding. When you begin, I always put three fingers here, three fingers here. Okay. Okay. Roughly two inches forward and aft and it's real simple, is you break it like this, okay? So there's one piece, and that's for those 732s, and I think this one will work as well. And what we're gonna do is, this is your center line right here, and I'm gonna hit this, and this only goes at the speed you set it at, and you just apply it. This feed roller is actually burnishing it as well. It's pushing oh. the glue in, and as I come off with this, you'll see, you come off, in a straight line. The other thing I'm gonna, I want to teach you when you're doing edge banding, you never take a fresh edge banded piece and lay it like that because that glue is setting right now. Right. And what will happen is it'll push one way and it may offset. So what you always do is you always take your board, put it on your table, but leave it unsupported like this. We got the, the glue's already set up, the uh, EVA glue. So what we're gonna do is we gotta clip this short. Okay, even with this butt end. Okay. And we're gonna use this clipper right here. And when you put it on, you'll notice this little part right here. Okay. And when I pull this, this comes up. This is the clipper. This is what holds it to the front edge. 
So when you put it in like this, and you can see this better than the camera right here. See how it's even right there? Yeah. Okay. You're just gonna, and what I'm doing here with my fingers is I'm holding it in tension. I like to do this vertical, it just makes it easier. And I just pull down and now it's perfectly flush. Okay, <laughs> so the next step is we gotta trim this banding. And like I mentioned before, this is one millimeter, so it's tough with a file. Okay. But like I mentioned before, we are gonna present this router at a one and a half degree. It's already built into this base. But it's just getting used to the ergonomics of this. Okay. So I set the, the uh, depth to cut perfectly in line with this deck. And you don't have to see anything. There's a bearing right here that rides on the front edge. Okay. Okay, so kind of remember when we were using the OF1400 to, to go around, you just felt the bearing? Yeah. Okay, so this one, we're gonna just start it here. And I, I always talk about right angles. We go like this, I turn the corner and I just pull it toward me like this. Okay, so this is what I wanna point out. I could go like this with my fingers, right? Okay? Mm -hmm. To see if that's perfectly even. That's what we want, okay? But the true test of checking for edge banding is taking a fingernail, if, if you got one, and scraping it. And you'll see how perfectly flush that is. Okay. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna just make a line like this. Because now we're gonna groove the back for our backs. The difference between a groove and a dado is a dado goes cross grain, where a groove, and you'll see where I've already selected this one, a groove goes long grain. Okay. So we're going to groove, so we're going to do what is known as a captured back. So this is my front. I actually like this as my grain, so I'm just going to orient everything and just make a line like that because that's where my backs are going to go. Okay. And also, the other thing I'm going to teach you is this. I'll say it every time. We've Grab that piece of plywood. Okay, we hauled it in here. Yep. We ripped it. We set up our MFT. We've cross cut it. Okay? We edge banded it. We guillotined it. Okay? We trimmed that edge banding. You have a lot of time into this cabinet already, <laughs> and we still got four pieces of plywood. Always label everything. Okay, that way there, we don't have to go back to step one now. Right. Okay. <clears throat> this is 18 millimeter plywood. I scribed a line at 18. This is my um, nailer that you won't see. Okay. okay? You got that? Yep. So I drew a line at 18. Now, what's 18 plus six? 24. Okay, so that's 24 right there. But the beauty of this system in this router is I scribed a center line. What's half of six? Three. Plus 18. 21. Beautiful. I scribed this. My, my center line is at 21 millimeter. Okay. Now, on this router, I put in, we're going to use a parallel edge guide with this router to create this groove. So what I did is I just took these rods and I deadheaded it in here like this. Okay, and locked it in. Now, if we look on this router, that's the center line. When I put the motor in, that's my center line, that's my center line, that's my center line, and back here I have a center line. I also have micro adjust on this. So what we're gonna do, a little bit of dust there, is I'm going to do my line up just like this. I'm gonna loosen this rod and this rod, and my micro adjust, and I'm gonna bring it right to my center line just like that, see that? Right there's my center line. If I need to micro adjust, I'll tighten it here and I can dial that in absolutely perfect and then make sure we tighten up all of this. So what's this gonna do? Is this is gonna take this bit while it's chucked up in the router and run parallel to this edge. We just have to set the depth now. Awesome, how, how do we know how deep to take the Okay, groove? so this is 18 millimeter. I usually go about half the distance for my groove. Um, some people say, oh, it's three quarter, whatever. That's three eighths in depth. So what I do is I, I'm gonna go nine millimeters because I love metric, it's easier for me. And I'm gonna set the depth, and it's really easy once you understand this router. There's a knob here, okay? You have to loosen that, and you have to loosen this knob here, okay? Your adjustment's right here. There's no slop in there. So what I do is instead of trying to figure it out or anything, I create gauge blocks. They're really easy. I just put some, uh, some CA glue together 
And this is a five and a four domino. Hello, how much is that up to? Nice. You're the man. So I'm just gonna take that and the micro adjust on this is awesome. You're gonna see what I do is I create a ceiling with that other domino. And you're gonna see where I just bring it right in just like this. There's my mine, not nine millimeters of depth. I'm gonna lock it in and lock it in. When, see how I closed this off? Okay, so I have a continuation here. And I wanna describe it like this. This is your in feed and this is your out feed. Okay, there's a certain pressure you put on your infeed at the beginning. It's kind of like a jointer. And as you get to the end, you don't want to wobble this. Okay, so here's my pressure here. So I'm going to bump this. I got my dust extraction hooked here. You're going to see how exceptional this is. I have my pressure here. I don't hold it here and here. I hold it here and I grab it just like this. So my pressure's here. I take that bit. I push it up against there. I pull it away and I stop. Okay, my pressure's here. You don't want to wobble into the cut. Pressure's there. You don't have to kill it. And you're going to get through Now, as you get to the end, you'll want to tilt this like this. Your pressure comes back here. And you walk it off. Just like this. Okay? That way there you have a perfect groove. And you can see where you get every daggone speck of dust with this. It's amazing. I think he's starting to show off. <laughs> the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the rail okay, properly with these. These are called end stops. And Chris, I want you to get in here so you can see this. We have some marks here. There's 32 and there's 16. When I do the side of the cabinet, we're gonna set it at 16. You'll understand as we lay out the rail in a few minutes. Okay. Now, see how I have that tight over there? Yep. Okay, now I'm gonna put this on. And when I, this is how I always remember how to set this up. The number is facing up toward me and out toward my body. So when I put this in and I lock it in with this knob right here. Okay, and here's the real test to see if you cut these exactly 768. See how there's no movement in there? you cut a perfect balance pin. Here's the pin that references, this is called the parallel stop. Okay. You'll also notice right here, this is a hack. We'll do a quick tip on that later. I put some white out in there. See the zero? Yep. We're gonna set this up at 37 right there, okay? Just okay, like that. just like yeah. that. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take those pins and I'm gonna put them right up against there, just like that. When I put this underneath here, and I'm locking it right here, okay? I'm always checking my pin to see if there's any daylight. Every once in a while, it'll move off. Okay. So I'll just have you feed it down underneath there. Okay. Then lock it in. Pretty simple, but always check your pin here for yep. daylight because you don't want it to move. We got it. Good, lock her in. Locked in, ready to go. We'll take these off, we're almost ready, and then we'll label the rail. We look at these, these are a shelf pin. Okay, for adjustable shelves. Okay. Okay, we gotta create the holes for these. These and these are five millimeter. That's why you chucked up a five millimeter bit. Okay. It's simple. So what we wanna do is, yes, we could do these holes from top to bottom. Okay, but that does, sometimes that just doesn't look good. Certain species of wood. So what we wanna do is we wanna put like six holes in the middle, but we gotta do our shelf pin holes. Now, <clears throat> that first hole in cabinetry starts at 80 and then you do a 32 millimeter increment. Okay. So remember when we put this on, 16 is right. What's half of 32? 16. Okay, so that's 16. And what's 32 plus 32? 64. Okay, plus 16. Oh. 80. Okay, so we're gonna mark our rail. So that's our first pin and we'll mark our rail here. Okay, we'll come down, and it's always, always remember this. If you use the 16 up and out, it's three full holes. So one, two, three. Okay. And there's our secondary hole. Okay, now, what we want to do, and here's the beauty of the 32 millimeter system. What's half of 768? I'm not good at math, but look, there's a dot right on my... Oh, right. it, what is it? It's 384. 384. So I'll mark my rail with a center line for that 768. And then it's always an even number. Three above, 
three below. Okay? okay? And now we're gonna punch those holes. Now, the reason we marked the rail is pretty simple. I don't have to think about anything right now. Check it out. See the little cursor? It's, oh. You'll see the line right in there. Nice, okay. Now, to, when I look at this cursor here, that's my first hole, okay? But I always wanna, the pin that falls into the holes, listen, see how it falls in? When I go to my, when I punch and I go to my next one, I let it fall in, it rides on here, I let it find its equilibrium into the hole. Okay, that way there is less tendency to skip those holes. So let's go back and we'll get started. I'm gonna turn it on and lock it on. My hand never comes off of this knob. I don't plunge from here. I plunge straight down and release. I go to my next one. I plunge down and then I'm gonna go over here, find that next one, plunge. I'm just lifting the tab up. I'm plunging, lifting the tab up. Plunging as I go. It's that easy. What we're going to do now is we're going to put our parallel guides on. We're going to work from the back. We're going to punch the holes in the back of the cabinet. Okay. Good. Put that on a little bit better. Press fit it on. Okay, so we got our parallel guides. I'm going to fit it into the groove. I'll get mine first. There you go. All right. The plate is flat. Flat. Okay, good. Let's lock it in with our clamps. Let me ask you this. Okay. Do we have to do the shelf pins at the back of the cabinet? No. So the only ones you're gonna punch are the center line for your, um, your pins for your sh adjustable shelves. Okay. okay, so let's get you set up and get punching these. Okay. So Sedge, what's next? I am so glad you asked. <laughs> All right, so what we gotta do is we gotta do some joinery. This is our bottom. We're gonna put one in between the top here. Okay. Emphasis on between. Now, we're gonna lift these up and I wanna teach you a little bit about cabinetry. Okay. Your tops and bottoms are always between your sides. Okay. Okay, now, however you join them now, whether a pocket hole, screws, crown staples, Right, but what we're going to do is we're going to use a domino. And what's really important about using a domino, because we're going to use the tight setting on it. Okay. Okay, our domino is going to go in here, just like this. We're going to do one in the front, one in the back. Yes, we're going to still assemble with screws, but the key to this, and I just think this is so important. When you, we assemble this, if you've ever assembled a cabinet, okay by yourself it's real problematic doing the balance sure. okay but also we want the front edge here to perfectly align with the edge banding if we use the domino in the tight setting just like this okay we're going to use a 5 by 30 5 being the thickness 30 being the length okay. so we're going to go 15 this way and 15 this way okay we'll get the absolutely perfect alignment on that front edge plus the sheer strength of the domino. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this like this and it's just a simple reference mark just like this. That's where we're going to put the plate of the domino. Okay. Here, I'll show you right here, there's going to be a domino in here like this and a domino in here like this. And you can mark your boards like this. You can do it like this until you get used to it. Okay, so I always do a few labels when I'm with somebody new. Here we're gonna plunge horizontally, and here we're gonna plunge vertically. But if you really think about it, now that you have this line here, you know where the plate of the domino is gonna register. So think about it, what I, whenever I'm plunging, and I see I'm gonna plunge vertical, I always put on the support bracket, okay? But also, and let's just, let's just look at the domino. This part here, I'll even, write it on here, that's the plate. The square part is the base, okay? That plate, of course, when we're using it and we're dominoing, is gonna be just like this. I use this gauge block and when I put the, the number in that window, I lock it down. That way there, I have a reference point and any time I go back and I have to mill something, I know it's gonna be a perfect reference because I have that in there. 
I'm using a five by 30, so I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna plunge vertically in here. All right, so I need to set my depth. It's pretty simple. I just do this uh, tab here and I set it at 15, okay? That way there, I use a five by 30 when I'm using plywood. That way there, um, I don't have to change the machine's depth at all. Less tendency to forget stuff, okay? I'm all set up. I can build every cabinet like this. We're gonna index this front edge with this flap. Okay. And I'm gonna flip this around. We're gonna put it in the tight setting. Okay. That way there, all front edges line up. Now, you, we're gonna be flip-flopping this back and forth. I label, we're gonna do tight here. We're gonna do, whoopsie. We're gonna do loose here. Okay, so when we do the loose, this machine has to be running, we flip it over. Okay. Okay, now, when I reference from the back, I'm gonna reference right here, and I'll show you how to do this. I would put my pressure right here, and I plunge at a steady rate. Now, I'm going to take that, because I'm going to the back here. Like this. That way there, that little extra right there gives me three millimeters on either side. The one that matters the most is this one because that'll give us that perfect alignment from that front edge where the edge banding is. So because we made our marks here, all right, we labeled our boards, now it's a no-brainer. We're going to plunge horizontally with this. So I'm going to turn it on, I'll put it to tight, okay? You can look right here, see that? that? That way there you know you're aligned with that flap. And it's just a nice, steady plunge. That's all it is. And then I'll just come over here. Remember, I'm putting it to loose, and I'm using the edge of the machine. And it's that simple. So these are gonna go in here, so that's your front edge. Okay. And what I always do is I find the tight one first, like this. Okay, get it in there and that'll just fall in like that. And look at that, guys. Perfect here and perfect here. Nice. Okay, okay get it in there, perfect. And big D, that's a perfect butt joint. Okay. Cord, okay, cords so, are my feeler gauges. So, <laughs> okay, so now this is really important, okay? <clears throat> that mortise in here is 15 millimeters. So when we look at this, this is 18 millimeter plywood. It's down right about there, three millimeters, maybe one ply, okay, in that area. Okay. When we assemble this, never do this to jam it on because what'll happen is that'll blow through. Gotcha. Just, just take your time and we'll ease it on. So let's go like this, find that tight one first. Okay. Okay, and then ease it on with the other one. And look how that comes together, everybody. Look at that, that's absolutely perfect. D, you did good work, dude. Uh -huh. You're getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just take your time. There we go. Gently. See, there's a tendency of going like this. Yeah. That and works. that could break through a little bit. How did that come together? Let's just feel that. Oh, that perfect and perfect. That'll do. What do we call these, Chris? Butt joints? No. Yeah. Ooh, he said butt joint. Or our fingers are what? Feel like ages. Yeah, baby. <laughs> we gotta consider the depth of the groove. Do you know what that is? Uh, nine millimeters. Okay, what's nine plus nine? 18. Okay, so what I always like to do is I just like to write things down. 18, okay. Let's minus two. 16. Okay. So we have to calculate that in to the inside measurement. Okay. And remember, the grain's gonna run up because there's our sides and it's never gonna run horizontal. So we're gonna calculate and I'll show you how to label that. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna use this nifty tape. I'm just gonna make sure that that's just like that. Looks good. And I'm gonna take it like this. And the nice thing about this tape, whoop, 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 is to see how I punch it just like that. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna read right here. See the red line? Yep. What does that read? 732? 732. Okay, so 732 plus 16. That is 748. Okay, so very good. But remember that, okay, and this is how I label this. 748 is what? Our horizontal. Okay. Our vertical is, I'm gonna have you measure that. Okay. I'd be willing to bet it's 748. Okay, so hold it like this, bring it all the way down. Okay, now lock the tape. Good. 
Okay. And what does that read? 732. Plus 16? 748. Okay, so there you go. There you, that's your measurement. This is our vertical grain, and this is an easy cut because it's the same measurement, horizontal and vertical. Okay. So we'll measure 748 here. Okay, 745, one, two, three, and I'll make my point, and then I'm gonna come over here and measure this one, and then we'll line our guide, whoopsie, we'll line our guide rail up, just like this, and we'll make the cut. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, and the beauty of this track saw is I have it on here, it hasn't moved. I can come back here. And finish the cut, nice and safe. I don't have to overreach. I just come back over and finish the cut. As I take this off, I'm gonna have you ease that in, just like that. Okay, yep, you got your grain orientation. Always verifying your grain orientation. Let's see if we've got this, come on. Drum roll, please. look I think we got it and let's see Don't jam it too much oh my god big D Woo! now let's do this let's take it like this let's stand it up okay come over here D okay and this is where you go wow 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 what a nice box what <laughs> what a nice box, huh? Always have different levels or adjustable tables because this table here, right here, is perfect. This is my new assembly table. And now it'll be a little more ergonomically correct. So, we have a domino right about here. Yep. But I want to put one right here. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people may contradict me and say, oh, why don't you countersink? or something but with the evolution of these screws these are self-tapping and you see that right here they're, they're called nibs they're on the underside of that bugle point okay okay the nice thing is those are what we call a self countersinking screw so what we used to do in assembly in the old days is we'd have an air drill a pneumatic drill and we would countersink and then we would take a regular drill and put those screws in Okay, with a couple of crown staples to bring that edge in real yeah. quick. Well, with the advent of impact drivers and these screws, it saves a ton of steps. So I'm just going to take it like this. And that's called feathering it in. And look at that. That's a perfect, that's a perfect joint. Oh, so wow. Well. Perfect, perfect. So what we're going to do is, now remember, we get a lot of work into this. See this right front edge here? We don't want to degrade it. So we have a piece of plywood here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, so it's easy to do, to screw okay. them in. We're gonna take it, we're gonna flip it like this. Okay. Okay, we're gonna flip it down. Okay. You get everything where you need it, just like right here, your spanners are gonna be here. Now I'd be willing to bet that this measurement right here is 732 millimeters. <laughs> but what I wanna do is, and I've always done this. And somebody will say, oh, you should have cut your spanners or your nailers all at once. No, I like to make them nice and tight in here. Okay. Okay, just in case something had gone out of whack or whatever. Sure. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna cut them here on the cape pack. That is what we ripped that one. Go ahead and grab that 100 millimeter piece. Yep. Remember? Man, it seems like forever ago we ripped it. Right. That. So let's bring it over to the cape pack. We'll make a cut. If this one fits perfect, guess what? The next one's gonna fit perfect. And then you can just walk up to there and look, that's perfect. Oh, that's a nice stop. Okay, so what I'm gonna have you do, just walk over there. Okay. And because you have that stop, right? Right. I'm gonna tell you something about these new screws. This is a GRK? Yeah. You know why I like them? Because they're Torx. Okay, so let's get it back up on the MFT. All right. And there you go, Big D. You got your first cabinet already completed. And when we look at this, yes, we'd have to take it apart and sand all of this. Um, the nice thing is, is we can finish it. We'll be doing more videos on finishing. 
<clears throat> uh, we'll do videos on sanding, but I just wanted to complete this cabinet with you because this is the basic of basics. This is the beginning of our cabinet series. Now, if you want to see a step-by-step, -step, you can go back and you'll see how we, we created chapters and everything on there for watch times. Um, so you don't have to watch the whole thing all at once. But I just want to kind of maybe even tantalize you a little bit because this is the first one of many. We're going to do corner cabinets. We're going to do corner master cabinets. We'll do some fancy hardware for blinds as well. Cool. Um, we'll do different size uppers. We're going to do them with uh, uh, knockdown fasteners as well. Boy, we could do a video every month on just building this, a typical cabinet. So I just wanted to go from there. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. Yes, and as we always end this, be, be positive, positive and stay, stay shot. shot.